We have always known that this moment would come. We just didn't know when. I am Ariana Mason. I am an Anishinaabe activist, organizer, and a community worker from the Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior Chippewa. And I have been a longtime resident of Minneapolis and the greater Twin Cities. I have been with MPD 150 since the founding of it. And uh, we have been around for about five years. We, we started as a collective that was set out uh, with the intent of changing the narrative around how we talk about police and changing the narrative of what we're experiencing in our community. The, the main goal that we have set out with is shifting the narrative towards a police-free future because we do believe that is possible and we believe that it is necessary. And so we have come here at this point in time with that knowledge and being prepared with the information to share to the world about why, why we are where we are now. So for people that say, wow, look what happened. There was mass mobilization by African-Americans in response to the killing of George Floyd. And then the Minneapolis City Council resolved to transform their approach to policing and think that it happened overnight and think that it was simply a black white initiative. What would you add to that picture? This work has taken years, um, this particular moment is taking a lot of, of time to plant the seeds in the soil and to nurture the soil so that when the rainfall came, uh, we were prepared for it. Uh, as long, in, in terms of uh, talking about abolition or defunding of the police, this is absolutely not a new concept. As long as there have been police presence in the world, there have been conversations and actions trying to dismantle, to disband, to, dis to defund them. Um, this is not a new effort. Uh, the effort has definitely taken different shapes and different looks and had different voices be involved throughout the years and different approaches. But the work uh, to abolish the police, the work to disband the police, police has been consist a consistent presence. The current iteration that we are seeing and experiencing in Minneapolis is definitely something that um, has bloomed into its current form over, I'd say, probably the last five years. There are lots of people in law enforcement, of course, who would say, well, that's not why I went into the business. I'm there to try to keep people safe. And this language about defunding, like, what do we want? Do we want nobody left to answer 911 calls? Already you see right-wing memes mm. playing into people's fears about what transformation might look like. That is a very common, a common and very real concern that I hear because of course, when people here get rid of one thing, they're just like, well, there's not gonna be anything there. I'm like, no, no, that's not the case. We are not abolishing help. We're abolishing the police. We are not abolishing uh, like the, the assistance that needs to happen. We're not abolishing safety. We're abolishing the institution that does not keep us safe, that is not trained to de-escalate, that is not trained to center the protection of an individual well-being at heart. So when we say abolish the police, it's not about absence, it's about much more presence. And so take it for Minneapolis, like with Minneapolis as a more specific example, one of the things, or the first step, um, the big major announcement that happened on Sunday with the city council was the, was the announcement of the commitment um, to defund, specifically defund the Minneapolis Police Department. And the reason why that specific language is important is because that is the first step towards abolition. That is the first step towards a police free future. So with defunding, that will mean removal of money from a seriously overinflated police budget, um, from a very heavily militarized police force, and then taking that money and reinvesting it into, or excuse me, taking that money and reinvesting it into the community, into these life-affirming institutions, and into preventative care. So instead of punishing an entire community as a whole, we're going to be investing in preventative care so that we are, we are much more taken care of and we're much more safe. And is that paralleled by this shift from a focus on reform to a focus on abolition, defunding, a different type of definition for public safety? Yes, reform does not work. The idea of the reforms that the federal government just threw out um, are absolutely insulting because the, the, the other reality is that either uh, most, most major cities have either tried 
every single one of those reforms at some point in time, or they have some of them currently on the books, and it's still not effective. You cannot reform a system that is working the exact way it was designed to. You cannot. And so when we, when we consciously choose to move away from investing in those systems and hoping that they're going to do something better, it really does feel like you're moving away from an abusive relationship and it's finally taking that step towards freedom and liberation.